Ross, great to see you. And um, I vividly remember this time last year. Um, had me in the job all that long, and we asked you about your plans, and I think we're all really impressed about uh, what you already had in place. Tell us, in your mind, what were you thinking back then, and how did we go in fulfilling what you wanted to achieve? I had a look back at um, the DOI. Uh, Kelly Black resourced it and, and uh, showed me what I spoke about, and, and really, but it was still, it was quite vivid in my mind. We had three simple aims. We wanted to be a fit, available, and a team that game day was on the same page. And uh, even though there were some struggles with that along the way, as Matthew alluded to earlier, we think in the end we made six significant strides and improvement with that, culminating in this particular second and a half of the year playing some really, a strong brand of football. And, you know, with really almost, obviously with Luke McFarlane missing, which was significant, but we were fit, we were available and we were on the same page and we were able to stand up on the fiercest heat. So that was significant for us. So we ticked off a lot of the boxes here. Um, and with that though, it's more than the senior coach. There's a lot, and I haven't had an opportunity to thank really the, the key members of my staff. I can't thank everyone, but certainly, you know, fit and available, in particular, our doctors and conditioning staff. So Jason Weber, our, our elite performance manager, was really significant to, that is the most really significant relationship in a football department between senior coach his elite performance conditioner to come in unknown and form a really strong bond. You only have to look around the AFL and see those relationships falling apart and the, the effect they can have. So, you know, that was a feather in Jason's cap, what he was able to do with his staff as well. And our, our, our two doctors, you know, obviously I brought in some methodologies that they needed to embrace and support and, and they did that from day one, which is Ken Withers and Peter Steele and then the physio department, Jeff Boyle, Greg Mullins and Marshall Stockton. Can't thank them enough for getting our players rehabbed, off seven and operations was fantastic. So a round of applause is really warranted yeah, there. Absolutely. Um, and then certainly to, to my, my coaching staff, in particular, um, my line coaches, uh, you know, Peter Sumich, Mark Stone, Roger Hayden, and the development team, you know, headed by um, Simon Lloyd, has just been magnificent with Ash Prescott and Steve Grace and, and Sean McManus and, Spider Burton. So I thank you guys for putting up with me, but really supporting the players in, in a manner that's required to enable us to grow as a football club. So they're my thank yous. Yeah, no, well said, Ross. Can I just ask you, um, in your mind, and you said that Matthew alluded to it before, when the players were coming to terms with, with the game plan, were you, in your mind, how were you with that as that transition happened? Were you always confident that it was going to happen the way it did? Is that, I mean, the life of a coach, I think, must be so Pretty difficult. Easy, yeah. oh, look, we started 5-2. It could easily have been 7-0. But in my mind, we still weren't playing the brand that I would like us to or the coaches would have liked us to. And then we had that really rough spot. But what we did, we continued to work really hard and practice great effort. And our training standards, if anything, just continued to improve. Mm. That the players never lost faith in the coaches and the coaches never lost faith in the players. So we're able to work through that. It's a great lesson for us as a footy club that when the outside pressures are coming, we didn't waver from the president through, Steve Harris, Chris Bond. And I, I didn't mention Chris Bond before and I had him there at the top of the list. I've never worked with a football operations manager that, that has such integrity and transparency in working with me as a senior coach. So I really thank Chris for that as well. Um, but in relation to the task, we just continue to work hard, adjust, evolve our game plan until it was what it was. And, but, you know, at the end of the day, Steve Harris has touched on failure's feedback, and we talk about that all the time. We didn't win the premiership, so clearly we need to improve, and it, it's about a summer of, of hard work. And, you know, the, the Luke McFarlands and Matthew Pavlich, uh, Michael Johnson, and they can't get much better. We're, we're hoping they maintain, but we need our young players, our second to fifth year players, obviously headed by Stephen Hill and Nathan Fife, and but you saw them up here locking down. We need those guys to make a statement, so it's not a break for them. This is active rest. They need to come back, make a statement now over the next eight weeks and pre-season, pre-Christmas and post-Christmas to improve this football club and put pressure on spots. So, because if we look around, you know, I know that Chris Judd, he's not going to be resting in this period, and and. Uh, you know, Sewell and Franklin, they're going to be that disappointed. They're going to be fierce in the off-season. So if you think you can relax, 
we're sadly mistaken because the best players in competition have missed out. Just think about the work they're doing and how they're going to come back, and that's how we've got to approach it. The challenge is there, and it's, it's great to hear that already the focus on, on the improvement for next year. Tell us, Brett Kirk, what will he bring to the football club? Wonderful player. Yeah, he will. I, I've just got... I had three points. I knew that question was coming, but it was really knowledge, great knowledge, great personal character, and great passion, you know? And mm. Wayne Bennett talks about passion, and he said, you'll see some guys are passionate for three months and some six months and some guys a year, but give me the guy that's passionate for 10 years, he'll get it done and he'll get there. And, and that's Brett Kirk. He, he'll bring great passion and, and add to it. Yeah, it's a wonderful recruitment. Uh, Daniel Pierce, early in the week we heard that he's coming to the club. Um, tell us about that move. You must be excited about that. Yeah, really exciting. Uh, uh, Brad Lloyd and Chris Bond, the list managers, in, in conjunction, they consult obviously, but you know the club had a strong strategic plan, organising salary cap. Uh, it's not an insignificant insi issue to overcome to attract good players and... We just think, you know, with Hayden and Stephen Hill are real line breakers in particular, and he's quick, he's a ball carrier, and he'll really add uh, and fit into the group dynamic really well. So we're incredibly excited to get Daniel, and but the proof's going to be in the pudding. We'll give him every opportunity, but I'm sure he'll grow. A wonderful challenge there for Daniel. Now, my last question, which I know you know about, it sounds like you're well and truly on top of this, <laughs> with the challenge going out to the two to five players. Um, preparations for 2013. Obviously, in your mind, they started pretty much when the game against Adelaide finished. Yeah, well, it did. You know, it was, we were bitterly disappointed. We, we took no satisfaction in... We're not into honourable losses and, you know, all we're about improving and getting it done. And I felt it was a game that, as a coaching group and a playing group, we should have been able to get across the line. We're in that position and we didn't. So it, it, it hurts, it burns, it's driving us. So it's been... There's been a couple of tough decisions on the list... There's probably a couple more to come, to be frank. Um, we've got to sit down and make some decisions. We're going through trade period as we speak in drafting. So there's some decisions to be made. We've got great continuity in our staff on and off field, but the players have been sent away with strong programs. Um, they're monitored daily. All that information comes back to head office, so big brother's watching. <laughs> but we really have a strong plan where we need to... We've analysed where we need to improve, and... We'll have a football program that will enable us to grow and improve. But we, we, it's been easy to identify the mechanics of the game because the players have brought great effort, game day, and there's no confusion a, as a coaching group what we need to improve on. So, yeah, there's certainly not a, not a period for rest. It's a period for improvement and planning, and, and that's where we're at. Well, Ross, uh, congratulations on a, on a very good first year with the Fremantle Dockers. What I really love is the, the honesty tonight that you've said to all the members here and you've outlined exactly where we're at and where you think Fremantle's at and what Fremantle needs to do. So I know I speak on behalf of everyone here. Good luck to you, the players, the coaching staff for 2013. Thanks, Tom. Cheers. Good on you, Thanks mate. for your support. Good on you, Ross.